Hello, everyone. I'm Tanya Rivero. Welcome back to CBSN. 2020 by far is the deadliest year in the U.S., according to the CDC, largely because of COVID-19. More than 320,000 people have died from coronavirus, and the U.S. is approaching 20 million Americans infected. Earlier today, Dr. Fauci and Secretary of Health and Human Services Alex Azar received doses of Moderna's COVID vaccine. And as more Americans receive the vaccine and others get the disease and recover from it, scientists are learning more about how the virus impacts the body. According to a new article in The Atlantic, medical experts are finding a mysterious link between sleep and COVID-19. For more, I want to bring in the author of that article, Dr. James Hamblin. He's a staff writer for The Atlantic as well as a lecturer at the Yale School of Public Health. He's also the co-host of the podcast Social Distance. Dr. Hamblin, welcome. Great to have you with us. Can you explain the findings of how the sleep hormone melatonin affects this virus? I can't fully explain it, but there's a really interesting connection that's been slowly emerging over the course of the pandemic. Uh, some researchers started by noticing that melatonin had the potential to, uh, to block uh, some of the activities of the virus. It was a rough hypothesis, but they decided it was worth checking out. And over the past uh, nine months have been tracking whether or not people who take melatonin had any better outcomes than people who don't. And some interesting correlations have suggested uh, yes. And so now there are clinical trials underway, eight of them around the world, in which people are being given melatonin and, and seeing if it has a benefit. Uh, we don't yet know if it will, um, but it's just an interesting connection that people have started to notice. And it's kind of on the frontier of things that are, are not going to completely prevent or, or cure this disease, but, but might have some interesting influence. So in your article, you write that the British Sleep Society found roughly three quarters of people in the UK have had a change in their sleep during the pandemic. And in fact, a Johns Hopkins neurologist labeled it COVID somnia. Uh, what is the main driver behind this so-called COVID somnia? That term has come to refer to uh, people who have not been infected uh, by the virus, but are just experiencing changes in their sleep patterns due to either working from home, not socializing as much as usual, um, you know, be, being out of work, uh, not going out often, just the, uh, the monotony of, of days and days that are very similar in, in lockdown or quarantine, or at least in distancing. And, and that throws us off, and, and that throws off our, our regular rhythms and, and can create sleep issues for people. Uh, but it seems to be different from the issues that people who have had COVID and recovered are having with sleep, which um, is a unique phenomenon that is a little bit more interesting to, to neurologists. Some people have recovered from COVID, even a mild case, felt better and then developed insomnia in the weeks and months later, and that has persisted. Very interesting. So you're saying that this post-recovery insomnia that some people are developing doesn't go away, or at least hasn't to date. It, it, it becomes a permanent problem? It's nebulous. For some people, it, it can go away. Mm -hmm. For others, it doesn't seem to be. I mean, you know, this is still a, a, a new disease. You know, a year ago, it, we didn't know it existed, it didn't exist. So we can't say that anything that it causes will, will never go away, but there are at least longer term issues, which is to say after you've been, you know, you've gotten better, um, other problems start happening in the nervous system, whether it's fatigue, right. myalgia, muscle pains, um, brain fog or insomnia, which insomnia seems to be the most common among those. And that seems to be due to some inflammation that's caused during the infection process that that's lingering afterward, which which is known to happen after viral infections, but the specifics of uh, what's happening in COVID are, are still emerging and showing a really interesting link between COVID and sleep. 
Uh, that's a good point, that a lot of viral infections do leave sort of lingering symptoms of one kind or another. And uh, COVID is acting like a, a normal virus in that regard. But like you said, we're still learning about those lingering symptoms. Um, you also write about chronic fatigue symptom. How much does the medical community know about this? And, and how is it linked or not linked to the coronavirus? I think chronic fatigue syndrome tends to be a, a broad category, uh, which encompasses a lot of different symptoms which might have different causes. Um, sometimes it seems to be a post-viral um, condition where people are have general changes in energy, and that can include uh, you know low energy, a lot of fatigue, but also insomnia and inability to sleep. Other people have hypersomnia where they're sleeping a lot. So there's a lot of variability in that uh, regard, but some doctors are saying this, this falls under the same rubric and should be thought of accordingly, which is that there's not, unlike uh, a classic autoimmune condition where you might have antibodies that are attacking the self in a really targeted specific way, um, it tends to be more of a persistent low-grade chronic inflammatory response, which might come and go. So people might feel completely better and and then the symptoms come back and it fluctuates and it, and it lingers for months. And um, so this is the picture that's emerging. We don't know exactly um, exactly how to treat it and what can be done about it, but it's part of the picture that I, I think the public would do well to, to keep in mind when thinking about the stakes of, of this illness. Absolutely. And is there any indication that if you try to maintain a healthier sleeping pattern, as you said, a lot of people are, are, are veering into these unhealthy sleeping patterns because they're not leaving the house enough or, or, or what have you. But is there any indication that people who show a little discipline and maintain healthier and, and, and more regular sleeping patterns will have a better chance at staving off uh, COVID-19 or at least recovering more quickly? Is there any indication of that? There is. We know that good sleep habits, uh, getting good quality sleep is tied to all kinds of health um, and it, including uh, lower rates uh, of diabetes, hypertension, obesity, things that dispose people to uh, possibly having more severe cases of COVID if they get infected. And it, you know, there's a lot uh, that people don't feel empowered about right now, especially people who are, you know, quarantining, isolating, working from home, social distancing. One thing that people can try to do, um, you know, if they have the ability to, is to, to prioritize sleep and be in a place where your body, should you get infected, is maximally uh, healthy, you know, it is um, ready such that you don't uh, fall into one of these chronic inflammatory states. Now, nothing can completely prevent that, but being optimally healthy uh, right now is certainly not a, a bad idea. And as these connections emerge between uh, coronavirus and sleep and we come to learn more and understand it better, um, I'd be really surprised if it didn't point to the fact that people who, uh, who were better slept um, ended up faring better in the long term. Very good points, Dr. James Hamblin. Every little bit helps in the fight against this virus. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me.